Welcome back to a very exciting edition of Trogley's Guitars here. In the Norlin era of Gibson, there was about four or five models that really stood out to me. One of them was the Artist Les Paul, and I'm happy to be able to offer you guys one of these. This is a 1980 Gibson Artist Les Paul. As you can see, it has an SKB Global Transport Authority case. It's actually a really nice case. Basically, you pinch this under there, and it releases the latch. It also has a locking key. The key is inside the case. We're at four and five latches. And there's the gorgeous beauty. Is in relatively good condition. There is some tarnishing on the brass truss rod cover. It does say Les Paul Artist on it. If you are not familiar with this model, basically in the 80s when synthesizers were really popular, Gibson decided to pair up with Moog Electronics and they put Moog Electronics in a guitar to add Compression, sustain, something else. And that's what these three switches are. Is you have your normal pickup selector switch here. Then I forget which one's which, but it's like compression, sustain, and something else. But as a playing standpoint, this one gives you tons of sustain. It just lasts forever. This one. I'm not sure what it exactly does, but it kind of gives you a more stratty feel. It's not a coil tap, but it it's more single coil sound. This one I can't really describe what it does. This is your master volume here. And these two knobs are made specifically for this guitar. As you can see, it has zero and it kind of locks in place at zero if you push down. Then it goes to a negative five, and then a positive five. Now, I was playing this guitar yesterday and I had it all figured out. I believe when you go this way, it becomes more trebly. Then this way, it's more bassy. And this one's the opposite, more bassy here, and more trebly this way. This is definitely a guitar. You will have to take some time to get used to the new controls because it sounds like no other Les Paul with these electronics and to dial in a sound that you really like on it well since there's so many of them it can take a while I had a very good experience with this guitar at first I didn't really like it but that was because you know I wasn't using the controls properly so user error all right Let's get the case out of the way and set up our tree stand here. As you can see it there. All right. So once again, 1980 Gibson artist Les Paul. Gorgeous looking thing. Now we shall start the video tour. As I said, the guitar itself is in relatively good condition with nothing too major to report here besides some yellowing of the lacquer. My favorite thing about these Les Pauls are these headstocks that script LP Les Paul logo on it. I absolutely love that. Just a little bit dusty there. then I'm thinking this brass nut might have had a little bit of work done to it because it's rounded. I don't believe my 2550 that had a brass nut was rounded like that so it might had had some work done on it. I'm not 100% sure. The frets are in terrific condition. It is very easy to play this guitar. No problems. No major flaws on the fretboard. 
no loose inlays. Just a great plain ebony fretboard here. As you can see, the top, there's really no super major dings that I'm seeing, except for maybe right there. Maybe there. Maybe a little scratch there. Everything else kind of looks like it would be cleaned off pretty easily. Maybe a few polishing scratches here and there. As you can see, almost all the gold's worn off this TP6 tailpiece. A little bit here and on the edges of the pickups here. But all in all, it still appears gold. And my favorite part about this top is this area right here. As you can tell, like when I change the angle, it turns bright, but then when it goes back, it goes dark there. It's kind of interesting, especially in person. It's got a little bit of non-traditional figuring in the wood there with the flame. Take a look at the sides here real quick. Oh, there's a ding right there. That's not too bad, especially since you won't see it. There's a little nick there. Looks like a little bit of stand rash right there from sitting on a non-nitro safe stand. I guess let's check and see if that was on the other side. I don't see it over here, so just that one little area. So, not too bad. Take a look at the top of the headstock here. As you can see, it is a 1980 model, 102nd day of the year. 21st in production for that day. In the Nashville, Tennessee plant. A gorgeous three-piece neck. It's a light colored finish which is usually typically more desirable on these guitars. You know my 2550 has a dark neck and a lot of people always tell me man if that had a lighter neck I would take it. Now, my favorite thing about this guitar is this extra little cutaway here. It's just absolutely phenomenal to play with because it just comes straight up to your body and it feels just much better than a normal Les Paul. And the weight on this one is about nine pounds, six ounces. So it's relatively light because they did take a lot of wood out to put the electronics in, but it's, it, it still sounds like a typical Les Paul when you have all the electronics off. So, not only does this offer you a less traditional sound, it also gives you the typical Gibson sound, as well as these added extras. As you can see here, there are some screws missing. And this is the battery compartment. This guitar does need a battery to operate. And I'm sure you can pick up set of these gold screws. I think I was looking on eBay last night. Ten bucks gets you twelve of them. That would fix that. The battery does rattle around in here if you shake the guitar, but I, I hope you're not shaking the guitar too much. As you can see, not really too much. I don't see any buckle rash to be honest. So just add a few extra screws, and I would almost say this is in collector's grade condition. I mean, not 100% mint, but I don't think it's been played too much. I will try to post a separate video of the sound of this guitar, so make sure you look out for that, because I don't think this guitar would sound very good going through my old vintage tube amp, but it sounded excellent through my larger amp. 
As always, please visit my Facebook page, facebook.com slash troglys, T-R-O-G-L-Y-S. There you'll be able to find my best price available on this guitar, as well as send me a message and I can probably get back to you quicker there. As always, thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video demonstration of a relatively rare Gibson Les Paul artist. Les Paul. Thank you.